Stu from UK Bee Man and today we are back and we are doing a video on wax moth. Now those horrible pesky little wax moth that look just like this do come around in the United Kingdom and they are always gonna be found. Especially when you have a dead out or you have a beehive that is dying out. Normally the bigger bees or bigger bee colonies will fight them and get rid of them by themselves but when you've got those outer frames that are empty you've got a small cluster you are going to be finding wax moth potentially what does it look like well as a larvae it can be quite difficult and as proven in my video that i will once publish show you and that is a post-mortem inspection of one of my nukes and i'm gonna say it straight i was pretty convinced it was wax moth but i wasn't sure there was a lot of larvae and castor eggs inside there and I was like, maybe it's just a fly. But no, when I went through the further inspection of it, I did find a typical red-headed wax moth larvae. Looking in the internal frames, just like this video, you can see the castors moving around. Oh, sorry, the, the, the larvae moving around and the castors quite solid in those cells. Now to find the actual eggs is really difficult and if I have a look in here without a microscope or some bloody good glasses I'm really gonna struggle to find it so I've got castor eggs everywhere just like in that video that I'm showing you and I'll do another one so you can see it all the way across so that we're on pinpoint perfect description then hopefully we can see just a way across. So looking inside here, you've got the caster eggs, those solid harder type ones. And then you've got a larvae moving around just inside there. Horrible things, can't stand them. Look at it moving, right? All those away across, right there, another one digging his way around and then they go on to the harder style there but looking for the eggs is solid and it's probably like in the center of that one where there's one singular on its own uh, where am I that one by there you can see a few dots and it's highly likely that they will be the eggs <sighs> so what do you do well you freeze them stick them in your freezer and freeze them up and that is one of the best things that you can do. But with an infestation just like this, no. I, I'm not convinced. But I'll freeze them. And I'll give them a look afterwards. If I'm not convinced, then no. I won't use them. But that's what you got to do. you got to freeze them up. And bang them out. And that's it. Done dusted. Reusable. There's no diseases in these, it's just an infestation of wax moth and dead bees. Um, but let's actually get more into the wax moth then. I think it would be quite important to give you a bit of a background or a bit of knowledge on the wax moth instead of me showing you this is what it looks like and whatnot. So let's get further understanding with some pictures that are going to help you with understanding what they look like at different stages and whatnot. So here we go. There are two species of wax moth the greater wax moth and the lesser wax moth. Both species eat beeswax, particularly unprocessed wax, pollen, remains of larval honeybees, as you saw in the video, where they were putting the actual larvae into the actual bees that were dead. Honeybee cocoon silk and enclosed honeybees feces found on walls of brood cells. Both species are pests of active hives. However, they will usually take advantage of an already diseased or declining or deceased honeybee colony and will therefore indicate other or some other underlying problems with the colony. Both greater and lesser wax moth will more commonly cause damage to unattended combs in storage, especially in areas that are dark, warm and poorly ventilated. So if you store them into the uh, sheds or you put them into you know wherever you put them and it's dark and it's warm etc then you could get a problem with wax moths so looking at the life cycle of a wax moth then 
The life cycle of both species of wax moss consists of four stages, eggs, larvae, pupa and the adult moss. The development of each stage of the wax moss life cycle depends significantly on the environmental factors, particularly temperature. The optimum temperature range for wax moth reproduction and development of wax moss is between 28 and 30 degrees Celsius, which is perfect within a, you know, a colony. Uh, light levels and ventilation also plays a role. The eggs, a female wax moth starts laying eggs immediately after mating and continues for approximately five days. The number of eggs that are produced by the female wax moth depends on the temperature, but can typically range from 300 to 600 eggs. The female lays the eggs in batches. In the dark, out of, out of the way of patches, it takes between three to five days for the eggs to hatch when the temperatures are between 29 and 35 degrees Celsius. Once the wax moth eggs hatch, the larvae immediately start burrowing through the comb of the hive and line the resulting tunnels with a silken web. As shown, it kind of looks like a slug trail sometimes, or it can look like a, like a spider has been all over it. The burrowing process causes damages to the cells of the brood and the honeycomb. The yield and saleability of honey products can be compromised by damage to caps or the presence of larval webbing, feces and other debris. In the brood comb, damage to the cells can sometimes result in bold brood. Bold brood occurs from wax moth larvae, partly removing the cell caps when burrowing through the comb. Worker bees then chew the remainder of the cap and fully expose the heads of the bee pupae, which then can lead to deformed legs or wings in the newly formed adult bees, kind of like Varroa with the uh, deformed wing virus, etc. In warmer temperatures, it can only take 20 days for the larvae to grow, but in cooler conditions, it can take up to five months. So in the winter in the UK, I would expect it to be on that sort of field of three months or so. Once the larvae have grown, they will find a place to pupate, which usually takes place on the wooden frames of the hive. The larvae will chew a cavity into the frame, causing permanent damage to the equipment before forming a cocoon form silk thread. Now, when you actually open up a hive, sometimes you will see it looks like a spider has just completely turned it into a complete, you know, cobweb ridden hive picture which isn't mine but I will show you what that looks like it's it's horrible stuff the lifespan of the adult wax moth varies depending on the sex of moth female live for approximately 12 days and males can live up to 21 days so it's really kind of one of those things um, when we have a look at the actual management of them uh, what the be aware in Australia which you know, has a great site, kind of like our MBU base. What they've turned around and said is the most effective method for protecting against wax moth is honeybees themselves. Like I said, bigger colonies will look after it. It is worth noting that the wax, wax moth can never be completely eliminated from an apiary or storage shed, so it is important that beekeepers always take good practice in managing this. Apiary hygiene and colony management, so it's looking after your tools, keeping everything clean, making sure the areas are secure. If you're going to store things away, think about wrapping them and putting them sealant away so that they don't get access to it. Um, the biggest thing you can really actually do, though, is like I said, is to actually freeze your frames. As soon as you spot anything like that, freeze your frames. It kills those eggs. It gets rid of them. It kills the larvae. It kills the casters or whatever they want to call them in that video. Uh, in that fact sheet. They are the things that we're seeing. So that is a video on wax moth. That is a live demonstration of what wax moth looks like close up. And what you will potentially be seeing in those smaller colonies or your dead outs. How to manage it? Freeze it. End of. Uh, would I reuse those frames? If they clean out nicely, yes. Yeah, I will use them, probably more for my swarms. Um, but in terms of if they don't clear out or they're really damaged, heavily damaged, just process it down, use the outer frame, but then the internal frame, no, just clean it out, render it. I know it's a lot of work sometimes, and for some beekeepers, they're like, oh, I really just can't be asked to do it, you know, but you've really got to think of the wider picture by here of, is it worth it? No. You, you know the bees can fix most things but sometimes when you look at some of these frames they can't if you like this video give it a like give it a thumbs up 
and give me a subscribe.